بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر أن الله يسجد له من في السماوات ومن في الأرض والشمس والقمر والشمس والقمر والنجوم والجبال والشجر والدواب وكثير وكثير من الناس وكثير حق عليه العذاب ومن يهل الله فما له من مكرم إن الله يفعل ما يشاء الحديث الثالث في بيان حرمة السحر السحر وتحريم تعاطيه وأن له حقيقة وأنه كائن لا خرافة حديث ابن عباس الذي أخرجه أبو داود وابن ماجه وحسنه شيخنا الألباني في الصحيحة وفي صحيح ابن ماجه وهو قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام من اقتبس علما من النجوم اقتبس شعبة من السحر زاد ما زاد زاد ما زاد من اقتبس علما من النجوم هو ما يسمى بعلم التأثير علم التأثير هو مخاطبة النجوم والكواكب واعتقاد أن لها تأثير في الكون وأن لحركات النجوم أثر فيما يجري من كوارث لأن علم النجوم علم النجوم المذموم هو العلم الذي يستخدمون فيه علم النجوم والكواكب لمعرفة بعض الغيوب ولاعتقاد أن لها تأثير لإمراض زيد أو عمر أو كذا وإلا فالنجوم خلقها الله عز وجل لمقاصد حسنة إن زينا السماء الدنيا بزينة الكواكب وحفظا من كل شيطان مارد لا يسمعون إلى الملأ الأعلى ويقذفون من كل جانب وابن عز وجل يقول علامات وبالنجم هم يهتدون فالنجوم والكواكب زينة للسماء رجوم للشياطين علامات يهتدى بها في ظلمات البر والبحر سوى ذلك حرام فالحرام هو أن تستخدمها لتعتقد أن لها تأثير وأن لها روحانية وأنها تؤثر ولهذا جاء في الحديث عن النبي العائد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما صلى في الصحابة على إثر سماء على إثر مطر فقال تدرون ماذا قال ربكم قال والله رجلنا قال لقد أصبح اليوم من لقد أصبح بي كافر ومؤمن فمن قال مطرنا بفضل الله ورحمته فهو مؤمن بي مكذب بالكوكب ومن قال مطرنا بفضل النوء كذا وكذا فهو كافر بالله مصدق بالكوكب ف فكل ما يجري في هذا الكون ما يتحرك من متحرك ولا يسكن من ساكن انما هو بقدر الله سبحانه وتعالى وبامر الله سبحانه وتعالى فهذه الكواكب مخلوقات إذا كان أعظم الكواكب وهو الشمس والقمر ثوران مكوران في النار ربنا ربنا عز وجل يلقيهما في النار يوم القيامة تبكيتا لعابديهما فكيف بما دون ذلك من كواكب؟ اعتقاد أن الكواكب لها أرواح وأن لها تأثير وأنها تخاطب وتعبد من دون الله هذا هو الشرك بعينه وهذا الذي يرضي الشيطان وبه ينعقد سحر السحرة عياذا بالله The Sheikh said that the third hadith regarding the prohibition of magic and dealing with it and that it has a reality uh, and that it is a reality not a myth uh, is a hadith narrated by Al Imam Abu Dawood and Al Imam Ibn Majah, and it is authenticated by uh, Sheikh Al Albani in his book uh, Al Sahihah and uh, in Sahih Ibn Majah. 
It says what means the one who extracts a knowledge from the stars, then he has extracted uh, a branch of sorcery. Uh, um, he would increase whatever uh, he would increase on that. The more he does it, the more he increases uh, of uh, um, dealing with sorcery. So this knowledge or this piece of branch of knowledge that is uh, uh, pertaining to uh, the star it says uh, it, it is called it is called by some uh, the knowledge of the uh, effects the knowledge of the effects uh, here uh, they believe that basically the stars they have an effect on the things that happen on earth uh, so they will use this branch of knowledge or this type of knowledge, the knowledge from the branch, uh, the, the stars and the planets, to uh, know uh, the unseen, to know the things that are hidden. Uh, and then uh, they uh, try to also use that to know uh, the effects of these stars and planets as they claim that it caused so and so to get sick and the likes of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created the uh, stars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the stars and created them for a great benefit. And the Shaykh said that the stars were created uh, for, three, uh, for three benefits and that is for them to be an ornament, ornament or uh, serve as beautification for the sky and they serve also as things by which the satans are thrown or uh, the, the satans are thrown by these stars and also they are created so that they will serve as signs for the people to use as guidance, you know, pointing to the north and like that, so the people know uh, their uh, direction. Uh, the Sheikh mentioned the ayat uh, from uh, Surah as safat which say what means, Verily we have adorned the near heaven with the stars for beauty and to guard against every rebellious devil. They cannot listen to the higher group of angels, for they are pelted from every side. They are pelted, the shayateen are pelted from every side that is using these uh, stars. Also, the Sheikh mentioned another ayah which says about the stars that they are signs and through the stars they are guided. They are guided meaning to the different uh, directions. So, these are the three uh, things that the stars are uh, created for. They are a beauty for the sky, they are uh, used to pelt the Satan's with, and they are signs by which people uh, can be guided in the land or in the sea. If they are used for other than that, then uh, that is haram, like those who claim that these stars or planets, they have some sort of spirituality and that they have some sort of effect on things that happen on earth and the sheikh then mentioned the hadith uh, uh, that after uh, a night when um, uh, it rained after rain has fallen down rasulullah said to the, said to the companions do you know what your lord have said uh, then he said to them that uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said today in the morning some people w w woke up as believers and some people woke up as disbelievers as for those who said uh, it rained because of the virtue or the excellence of Allah and his mercy then he is a believer in me and he is a disbeliever in the stars but as for those who say we were uh, rain or we got the rain because of the star of such and such or the star of such and such then this is a disbeliever in Allah and he is a believer in the stars. The Sheikh said that whatever that happens on the face of the earth in the universe, whatever moves or whatever stands still, all of that is by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
even the sun and the moon, the Sheikh said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw them in the fire on the day of judgment. He will throw them in the fire as a means of humiliating those who use to worship them in the worldly life. So if this is something that is happening to uh, the sun and the moon, who are the greatest uh, in, 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 in shape, then uh, what would happen to uh, the stars then? How about the stars then? Uh, so believing that these stars have any kind of effect on the universe and using this claimed uh, branch of knowledge to achieve this, then this is what the magicians are using and this is what, uh, uh, how the magic uh, is done or performed. ومن الأحاديث أيضا في دم السحر والتنفير عنه وتحريمه وخطورة تعاطيه حديث عمران بن حسين رضي الله عنه الذي أخرجه الهيثمي في مجمع الزوائد ورواه البزار ورجاله رجال الصحيح وهو بمجموع طرقه يرتقي إلى درجة الحسن لغيره كما قال شيخنا رحمه الله تعالى يقول عليه الصلاه والسلام ليس منا من تطير اي تشاءم او تطير له او تكهن اي دعا معرفه الغيب او تكهن له او سحر او سحر له يعني سحر بنفسه أو ذهب إلى من يسحر له ومن أتى كاهنا فصدقه بما يقول والكاهن هو الذي يدعي معرفة الغيوب فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهذا الحديث ينهى عن السحر وعن الذهاب إلى السحرة والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ينهى إلا على هو ما على ما هو محرم وما هو خطير والنهي يقتضي التحريم ويقتضي الفساد عند علماء الأصول والحديث الخامس حديث أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يدخل الجنة مدمن خمر ولا مؤمن بسحر ولا قاطع رحم مؤمن بسحر موضع الشاهد أن يعتقد أن السحر يؤثر بذاته لا بتقدير الله وإرادته والحديث ظاهره ظاهره تكفير هؤلاء ولكن من كان مصدقا من كان مستحلا للخمر فهو كافر مخلد في النار وكان من كان مصدقا بالسحر او مستحلا له فهو كذلك ومن استحل قطع الرحم فهو كذلك والا في الحديث المقصود به انهم يعذبون في النار مده حتى يستوفوا ما عليهم وحتى يتطهروا ثم يخرج من النار بعد حين ثم أثر ابن مسعود تأكيد للحديث السابق حديث عمران ابن حصين حيث قال ابن مسعود من أتى عرافا أو ساحرا أو كاهنا فصدقه بما يقول يعتقد أنه محق وأنه صادق فيما يخبر فهذا كفر بالشريعة لأن الله عز وجل كذب الكهنة وكذب السحر ولأنهم يستعينون بالشياطين فكيف يكون صادقين فمن صدقهم فقد كذب الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام وكذب القرآن وكذب الرحمن وبالتالي فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى غير ذلك من نصوص نبوية تؤكد أن السحر 
حرام وأنه من أعظم كبائر الذنوب وأنه واقع وله ضرر وله حقيقة وليس كما يقول بعض أشباه الجهلة بعض الجهلة وأشباههم من أنه خرافة ولا وجود له in dispraising uh, magic and its prohibition and clarifying the danger of dealing with it is the hadith of Imran ibn Husayn narrated, uh, narrated by Al-Haythami and Al-Bayhaqi which uh, uh, is, uh, is raised up to the level of Hassan uh, it's a good hadith that can be used as an evidence like Sheikh Al-Albani has said uh, the hadith says uh, he is not one of us. He is not one of us. The one who uh, believed in superstition or uh, basically uh, some someone else mentioned superstition to, to him. Basically, he himself uh, got superstitious or someone else got superstitious on his behalf and told him that. Or someone he is not one of us also. Someone who claimed to know the unseen, Kahana, or someone claimed to know the unseen on his behalf. Or the third uh, one who is not um, amongst us, not from the Muslims, the one who performed magic, or magic was performed on his behalf. Then Rasulullah said, the one who goes to a fortune teller, and believe him in what he says, then he has disbelieved in that which was sent down upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This hadith, the Shaykh said, forbids us from going to, uh, it, it prohibits magic and forbids uh, from going to the magicians and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not forbid anything except that it is haram and if Rasulullah sallallahu forbids something, then this proves that it is prohibited and that that action is corrupt as the scholars of the uh, foundations of uh, fiqh uh, say, the foundations of Islamic jurisprudence, uh, jurisprudence say. The fifth hadith in this regard, uh, the prohibition of sorcery and that it has a reality, is the hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an, which says what means he will not enter paradise. Rasulullah mentions that the uh, people who are mentioned, they will, not, they will not enter paradise. The one who is addicted to alcohol and the one who believes in magic and the one who cuts off his relations with his relatives, who cuts off the ties of kinship. He says, the uh, one who is addicted to alcohol, the one who believes in magic, the one who cuts off the ties of kinship, he will not enter paradise. Also, Rasulullah uh, sallallahu in this hadith, the Shaykh said, he mentioned, as you can see here, the one who believes in magic or sorcery, mu'min bisih. So this person is the one who believes that sihr or magic uh, has an effect by itself or on its own without the uh, permission and the uh, ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you look at the hadith and take the uh, what uh, appears from the hadith the apparent meaning of the hadith is that those people are disbelievers they are not Muslims this is what appears the apparent meaning of this hadith uh, that they are disbelievers but then we should understand it to mean those who view these things to be allowable these are the ones who are disbelievers so the one who um, allows he, he views uh, alcohol to be allowable uh, to drink and he gets addicted with that 
or the one who views magic to be allowable uh, to use or the one who believes that it is allowable in Islam to cut off the ties of kinship then these are definitely these are the disbelievers but then if someone does not uh, view it to be allowable then this is a sin uh, and what is meant by it then is that those people these three types of people they will not enter into paradise except after they are tormented and punished in the fire for the sins they have uh, committed and then the Sheikh mentioned a statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud who says that the one who goes to uh, a, a, a magician or a fortune teller and he believes him in what he says then he has disbelieved in that which was sent down upon Muhammad so so this means that this person has disbelieved in the law the Islamic law that was revealed uh, to Prophet Muhammad because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the magicians are liars so how, how can they be uh, truthful how can they be truthful and then the Sheikh said uh, etc there are other hadith there are other texts uh, that show the prohibition of magic and that it is from the major sins and that it has actually a reality and that it does happen uh, it is not like some ignorant people or their likes who claim that magic or sorcery is, is a myth and that it has uh, no reality uh, أنقل لكم بعض فتاوى العلماء في القديم علماء أهل السنة والجماعة الذين أثبتوا السحر وقالوا أن له حقيقة وردوا على من أنكر السحر وقالوا هو خرافة وخيالات كالمعتزلة وغيره من أوائل هؤلاء الإمام الخطابي رحمه الله شارح سنن أبي داود قال قد أنكر قوم من أصحاب الطبائع السحر وأبطلوا حقيقته والجواب أن السحر ثابت وحقيقته موجودة اتفق أكثر الأمم من العرب والفرس والهند وبعض الروم على إثباته وهؤلاء أفضل سكان أهل الأرض وأكثرهم علما وحكمة وقد قال تعالى يعلمون الناس السحر وأمر سبحانه بالاستعاذة من السحر فقال ومن شر النفاثات في العقد وورد في ذلك عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبار لا ينكرها إلا من أنكر العيان والضرورة هذا كلام الإمام الخطابي الإمام القرطبي المفسر صاحب جامع الجامع للأحكام وهو من كتب التفسير الفقهي يقول ذهب أهل السنة إلى أن السحر ثابت وله حقيقة وذهب عامة المعتزلة وأبو إسحاق الاسترابات من أصحاب الشافعي إلى أن السحر لا حقيقة له وإنما هو تمويه وتخيل وإيهام لكون الشيء على غير ما هو به وأنه ضرب من الخفة والشعوذة واستدلوا بقوله تعالى يخير إليه من سحرهم أنها تسعى قال وهذا لا حجة فيه كلامهم لا حجة فيه لأننا لا ننكر أن يكون التخيل وغيره من جملة السحر لأن من جملة السحر التخيل سحر التخيل هناك سحر اسمه سحر التخيير كما قال الله عز وجل وسحروا عيون الناس واسترهبوهم وجاءوا بسحر عظيم ثم الإمام المازل إلى أن قال الإمام القرطبي ولقد شاع السحر وذاع في سابق الزمان وتكلم الناس فيه ولم يبد من الصحابة ولا من التابعين إنكار لأصله الفتوى الثالثة فتوى المازري الإمام المازري من علماء المالكية يقول رحمه الله السحر أمر ثابت 
وله حقيقة كغيره من الأشياء وله أثر في المسحور خلافا لمن زعم أنه لا حقيقة له وأن الذي يتفق منه إنما هو خيالات باطلة لا حقيقة لها رد عليهم فقال وما ذكره من ذلك باطل لأنه قد ذكره الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وأنه يتعلم وأنه مما يكفر به وأنه مما يفرق بين المرء وزوجه وفي حديث سحر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه أشياء دفنت وأخرجت وهذه كلها أمور لا تكون فيما لا حقيقة له وكيف يتعلم ما لا حقيقة له ثم فتوى الإمام النووي من أئمة الشافعية شارح صحيح مسلم يقول والصحيح أن السحر له حقيقة وبه قطع الجمهور وعليه عامة العلماء ويدل عليه الكتاب والسنة الصحيحة المشهورة ثم ابن قدامة من كبار أئمة الحنابلة صاحب كتاب صاحب كتاب المغني المغني أكبر من أكبر كتب الفقه الحنبلي يقول والسحر له حقيقة فمنه ما يقتل ومنه ما يمرض ومنه ما يأخذ الرجل عن امرأته يعني يحبسه عن امرأته فلا يقوى على دماعها فيمنعه وطأها ومنه ما يفرق بين المرء وزوجه قال وقد اشتهر بين الناس وجود عقد الرجل عن امرأته حين يتزوجها فلا يقدر على انتيارها وإذا حل عقده يقدر عليها بعد عجزه عنها حتى صار متواترا لا يمكن جحده قال وقد روي من أخبار السحرة ما لا يكاد يمكن التواطؤ على الكذب فيه ثم أخيرا فتوى الإمام ابن قيم الجوزية الإمام ابن قيم الجوزية تلميذ ابن تيمية إيش يقول في فتوى يقول وقد دل قوله تعالى ومن شر النفاثات في العقد وحديث عائشة رضي الله عنها على تأثير السحر وأن له حقيقة ثم أبو ابن أبي العز الحنفي شارح الطحاوية قال وقد تنازع العلماء في حقيقة السحر وأنواعه والأكثرون يقولون إنه قد يؤثر في موت المسحور ومرضه من غير وصول شيء ظاهر فهذه الفتاوى سبع علماء كبار من أئمة الإسلام تؤكد أن السحر موجود وأن له حقيقة وأنه يؤذي ويضر ويقتل وأنه ينعقد بفعل الشياطين والسحرة وأن المؤمن يتقيه ويجتنب لأنه من أسباب المهلكات والمبقات المورد للنار والعياذ بالله والكفر برب العالمين Sheikh said now I will uh, report to you or I'll convey to you some of the verdicts of the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'ah, those scholars who affirm that magic has a reality and they, they, they refuted those who denied it like the group called Al Mu'tazila. The Sheikh quoted Al Imam Al Khattabi as saying that some people did deny magic and they invalidated its reality. And the answer to that is that it is uh, magic is true and it has a reality and that the majority of the nations of the Arabs, the Persians, the Indians and some of the Romans, all of them agree that it is affirmed that there is such a thing that magic. He said, and these are the best of the dwellers of the people uh, these are the best of the people on earth and they are the most knowledgeable in terms of knowledge and wisdom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they teach the people magic 
and in order to seek refuge with him from it. So he said, and from the evil of the uh, those uh, who blow into knots. Also, it has been reported from the Messenger وسلم, uh, reports that no one can deny except those who deny uh, things that you can see by your own eyes and things that the necessity affirm that uh, it is uh, present. Then the Sheikh quoted the statement of the Imam Qurtubi, the uh, author of the uh, Tafsir. Uh, he said that uh, the people of Sunnah, they are of the position that magic is uh, affirmed and that it has a reality. And the majority of the group called Mu'tazila and uh, Abu Ishaq and Istirabadi from the companions or from the followers of Shafi'i, they said that uh, magic has no reality. So, uh, people of Sunnah, they say it has a reality, it is affirmed. And Mu'tazila and this one scholar, he says that uh, it has no reality and it is rather just imagination, uh, uh, making you imagine things that for, for uh, what they are uh, not are uh, and that it is part of uh, just basically light uh, tricks tricks and um, acts of, of, of delusions or uh, the acts that the jugglers uh, the jugglers do uh, and the, as uh, it is in the Quran uh, it is made for them to imagine because of the sorcery that they walk, that the uh, that the snakes are moving, so it is only made uh, to seem to them as if that's what they're saying, and they uh, did not say, or it did not, the ayah did not say that it 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 it, uh, it moves in reality. Uh, so here, after that, uh, also Allah said that. They perform magic to the eyes of the uh, people. And then he commented on that saying that there is no proof in this uh, for those who oppose the position of Ahl Sunnah. They have no proof in this ayat that they mentioned because we do not deny that uh, imagining in itself uh, and other than it is part of the magic that is being uh, performed. Uh, then he said that uh, sorcery uh, has been widespread uh, and it was famous in ancient times when the people spoke about it and uh, the companions and the tabi'un, the second generation of Muslims, they, there is nothing mentioned from them that they denied, that they denied it. Uh, that it wasn't mentioned from them that they denied uh, magic, although it is widespread and it is being mentioned. Uh, another scholar is an Imam and an Mazari from the scholars of the uh, Malik, from the Malik scholars. He said that the magic is an affirmed matter and it has a reality like the other things, and that it has an effect on the person whom uh, magic is done to. And this position goes against the claim of those who say that it has no reality and that it is just some invalid, uh, invalid uh, imaginations or delusions that have no reality. Uh, the, then he went on to say, and this, what is being mentioned like this, that it, is, it has no reality, and it's just delusions, uh, is invalid, is false. That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it, magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in his noble book and that it is learned, uh, and that it is being learned, and that it is something that one might become a disbeliever because of it, and that also it is used to separate between a man and his wife. And in the hadith, 
of the magic that was done to the Prophet وسلم, that uh, these things are uh, matters that were buried and that they were uh, extracted uh, and all of these are matters that you cannot say about them that they have no reality and how would one learn something that has no reality if Allah mentions that they learn magic so magic then has to have a reality um, also the Shaykh quoted the statement of an Imam Nawi rahimahullah from the great uh, Shafi scholars he said what is correct is that magic has reality and the majority of the scholars they uh, mentioned that this is something uh, definite and uh, the majority of the scholars are upon this and this is what the book and the authentic sunnah uh, authentic well-known sunnah uh, prove and there is evidence for that in them uh, then the shaykh quoted the statement of an imam ibn Qudama uh, one of the great imams of the Hanbali school of fiqh he is the author of the book al mughni uh, he said that uh, magic has a reality uh, of magic uh, is that which kills or that which causes sickness or uh, what takes the man from his wife and prevents him from having intercourse with her and part of it part of magic is that which is used to separate between a man and his wife he said and it is widespread or well known between the people that there would be some uh, magic performed uh, or uh, uh, that, the, that the man is prevented from uh, having intercourse with, with his wife when he uh, gets married to her and if those knots or this, this magic that was done to him is undone uh, then uh, he is able to have intercourse with her he said this thing has been widespread uh, information to a point that it became uh, mutawatir, it became information that is narrated by so many people that cannot uh, agree on lying so uh, therefore we cannot deny that something like this happens uh, also he said that it was narrated of the reports regarding magicians uh, that which uh, people cannot just uh, agree to fake it up basically to just sit together and make up lies uh, like that also uh, an Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, the student of Shaykh Islam Ibn Zaymiyyah he said regarding this the ayah in the Quran and from the evil of those who blow into uh, knots he said uh, that hadith Aisha radiallahu anha the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha proves that sihr, that magic has an effect and that it is a reality or that it has a reality and lastly the statement of an Imam Ibn Abin Riz uh, al Hanafi uh, rahimahullah uh, who said uh, that the scholars uh, differed regarding the reality of magic and its types and the majority amongst them say that it may have the effect of the death of the person whom magic is done to uh, and his sickness and his sickness that it may reach up to that level causing death or causing uh, sickness without seeing something that is apparent that reaches him and Allah uh, knows best uh, inshallah I think we will pause for a few moments here uh, Abu Yunus